before we get into the sample problems, let's just look at a, a quick little picture here. Um, so let's say there's two points, and two points is all we need to make a line. And we'll call this one point one, and this one point two. And we will draw a line through the two of these. Okay, let's say this is just a, a single line. And this point here is going to have an x and a y associated with it. We're going to go come, come over this far, the x, and go up this far in the y direction. So let's call this the first x, or x1, x sub 1, and this y sub 1, because they are the x and the y of the first point. And then we'll look at the second point. That's going to be the second x, or x2, and the second y, or y2. And remember that we are trying to find the slope of these lines. So um, the slope is the rise, how far up you go, over the run, how far over you go. So this is the rise and the run. So how could we, actually that doesn't have an E at the end of it. How could we, if we know just the two points here, um, without counting it off and counting up to here and over to here, um, how would we use these values to find the rise over the run, how far it goes up versus how far it goes over? Um, well, it goes from y1 up to y2. That's how high it goes. That's how much the rise is. So how would we find the distance between y2 and y1? You just take, uh, here's y2, from there to there. That's how tall it is. And here's y1. It's just this little bit here. And you can see that if we were to take away this part, this would be the distance uh, of y1. That's how big y1 is, from there to there. Take it away from y2, you would have the total rise, the, the, the distance from here to there, vertically. So if we take y2 minus y1, that would be the rise. Okay, And we're going to take the rise over the run. How would we find the run? With a, by a very similar reasoning. Um, x2 is from here to there, and x1 is from here to there. And if we take the x1 away from the x2, we'll be left with just that much. So x2 minus x1 is the run. And that's the slope, or what we call m. That's the letter we use for slope. Okay. So we're going to start with number three. And let's refer back to this guy here. Um, 2 comma negative 4 and 4 comma negative 1. So this we could call this x1 and y1, x2 and y2. And it really doesn't matter. We could have called these x1 and y1 and these x2 and, and y2. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. So, and I'll show you that it doesn't make any difference. So y2 minus y1, that's negative 1 minus negative 4. Be careful. To make sure you are subtracting negative 4 in this problem. 4, that's x2, minus x1, that's 2. So that's negative 1 plus 4, that's going to be 3. And 4 minus 2, that's going to be 2. Okay, um, Let's do it the other way. Let's call this x2 and y2 and this x1 and y1. You'll see that it makes no difference. So we have y2 uh, minus y1 over x2, that's 2, minus x1. You'll see here, both of these came out to be positive. This was a negative 1 plus 4. That came out to be 3. 4 minus 2 came out to be 2. See what happens here is just the opposite, but it happens to the numerator and denominator, so it comes out to be the same in the end. Negative 4 minus a negative 1. That's negative 4 plus 1. That's negative 3. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2. But these are both negative, so that'll make a negative divided by negative is positive. So it comes out to be the exact same. Um, now it wants to know, does it rise or does it fall? Is it horizontal or vertical? 
Um, well, let's just take this as an example. If, if this were a point here, if we want to get to the next point, the slope would tell us to go up 3 and to the right 2. Remember, we talked about that in the intro video. If a line has a positive slope, that means that you always have to go up and to the right to get to the next point or down and to the left, either way you want to see it. See, this would tell you to go down and to the left. So uh, this one is what we would call from left to right. It rises. It rises from left to right or what we call uphill. So for number three, it rises. Let's just get rid of this, make room for the next one. Uh, next will be number five. So five, one, and eight, negative four. Uh, we'll call this one, these, these two here, x2 and y2, and we can call this x1 and y1, because it just doesn't matter which one we pick as long as we make sure that these are both two and these are both one equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So as long as these two, this x and this y, come from the same point, and this x and this y come from the same point, that's all that matters. So 1 minus negative 4, that's 1 plus 4, that's 5. And 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So this is a negative fraction. Positive divided by negative is a negative. So for this one, we would go from this point to the next point by going down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1, 2, 3. There's our next point. And so you can see that all points with negative slopes make you go down and to the right uh, to get to the next point if you're going from left to right, which would make all lines with negative slopes go downhill or fall. This one falls as the book says, its terminology says it, that it falls. Okay. Um, next is number eight. Yes. And they give us negative six, five, and negative six, negative five. Alright, so we'll call this x1, y1, x2, y2, negative 5 minus 5 over negative 6 minus negative 6. So negative 5 minus 5 is negative 10 over negative 6 plus 6 would be 0. Okay, so let, let's think about what that means. Uh, it means that, uh, say we're at our first point, we're going to follow this. Uh, slope, this rise and this run to find the next point. So we'll go down 10. There's down 10 and over 0. Don't go anywhere in the horizontal. So what kind of a line does that make? That's a vertical line. Okay, And you'll remember we cannot divide by 0. This is a big no-no. Caution. Dividing by zero is undefined, so it's called an undefined slope, and undefined slopes uh, produce vertical lines. Uh, let's do one more of these slope finding problems. Number 13, zero and negative three, uh, four and negative three. So x1, y1, x2, y2, negative 3 minus negative 3 over 4 minus 0. So negative 3 uh, plus 3 would be 0, and 4 minus 0 would be 4. So if we were at this point and we would go to the next point, we would go vertically nowhere, because that's what the rise is. Rise is 0, and over 4. So what kind of a line would that be? That would be horizontal. So remember, positive slopes are uh, rising, and negative slopes are falling. 
undefined are vertical and zero slopes are horizontal to zero. Okay. And next will be number 18. So there is this line I'll call line one. It goes through two points, three and negative one. And it goes also through six, negative four. Line two is gonna go through four, negative four, comma five. And also through negative two, seven. Okay. And we want to find the, well, well, what we want to do is find out if these lines are perpendicular, parallel, or neither. Let's just draw a quick little picture over here. This one goes through 3, negative 1, so that's somewhere over here. And this one goes through 6, negative 4. It goes through 3, negative 1, and 6, negative 4. So uh, about there. So that's line number 1. Let's see. Okay, and then line number two goes through negative four, five, so that's somewhere up there, and negative two, seven. Yeah, somewhere up there. So, and of course, this is not a great picture. So, if anything, we would suspect that they would be either perpendicular or uh, neither, right? It's either perpendicular, parallel, or neither. And if my picture were perfect, it looks like they're not, they're not either, but uh, it might be perpendicular. But I would definitely guess not parallel. Um, so remember that uh, in the previous video, if we have the same slope for both lines, that means that they're making the same, uh, and they're going the exact same direction, and so they'd be parallel. If they're opposite reciprocals or negative reciprocals of each other, then that will mean that they're perpendicular. And if they're neither of those, then they're neither. Okay. So for line one, we'll go with the, let's say, we'll go with slope one. Uh, negative four minus negative one. Okay, so I use this y and this y, so I'll come back and use this x and then that x in that very important order. Six minus three. So you got negative four minus negative one, so that's negative four plus one, that's negative three. Six minus three is three, so we get negative one as the slope. Uh, for the second slope, let's do 7 minus 5, that's 7 minus 5, and then negative 2 minus 4, no, negative 2 minus negative 4. Okay, so 7 minus 5 is 2, and negative 2 plus 4 is also 2, so that's a positive 1. So uh, negative 1 and positive 1, they are opposites, are they reciprocals? Well, sure, because uh, negative 1 could be just negative 1 over 1, and the reciprocal of this is just when you flip this fraction over, and that would be 1 over 1. So negative 1 over 1 and positive 1 over 1, they are negative reciprocals, which means these two lines are perpendicular. Okay. Mm -hmm. 24. We're given 2, 12, 5, comma 30. Okay, now these numbers have significance in this problem. X is measured in hours. So this is 2 hours. And then after that, we have this uh, something that happens at 5 hours. Okay, so something happens at 2 hours and something happens at 5 hours. What's happening at 2 hours? 2 hours, we, we can look up. What the what happened or what's the, the significance of two do, two hours, uh, and that is y is measured in dollars. So at two hours there's twelve dollars, and at five hours there's thirty dollars. So it seems that uh, some money is being paid to somebody, um, probably to you. You're maybe making some money over a course of hours. So how much money are you making? per hour, uh, or what is the rate of, of, of change of dollars per hour? Right, dollars per hour, that's what we care about. That's how we measure 
you know, how much we make if we uh, work hourly. So between two and five hours, you've gone from 12 to $30. So at the end, you end up with 30 minus 12. That's going to be your net change in dollars. And five minus two will give you your net change in hours. Okay, making sure to do that in the same order. The, f the, uh, the second measurement here with the second measurement. The second measurement in dollars and the second measurement in hours. So 30 minus 12 is going to be uh, 18. And this is going to be 5 minus 2 is 3, $18, and 3 hours. So we simplify all this, and we get $6 for one hour. So somebody's making $6 an hour. That seems to be the significance of this information. Okay, Let's try 25. Same kind of a deal. 0 and 11 and then 3 and 50 what are the signif what's the sig significance of each of these variables what is x measured in as it could be 0 hours and 3 hours or minutes or not sure x is measured in gallons okay so when there's zero gallons, there's 11 of something else. And when there's three gallons, there's 50 of something else. Let's see uh, what it is. Uh, so at zero gallons, we're at 11 miles. And at three gallons, we're at 50 miles. OK, so that sounds like uh, maybe gallons of gas for how many miles you've gone. So at zero. Uh, gallons, we're 11 miles. It's kind of a weird thing, but at zero gallons, maybe we're already 11 miles from home. And then at three gallons, we're 50 miles from home. Um, so if we do y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1, we'll get miles versus gallons. We get 50 minus 11 miles. That'll be in miles. And 3 minus 0 gallons. So 50 minus 11 is 39. And this is 3, 39 miles per gallon. So 39 divided by 3 is going to be 13 miles per 1 gallon. That's uh, not great. I don't know what they're driving. Uh, maybe an SUV or something like that. Um, but that slope between those two points is also the rate of change of the, the y variable versus the x variable. And number 30. Just one more quick one. It's just uh, finding the slope with slightly weird numbers. Negative 3 fourths, negative 2, 5 fourths and negative 3. Okay, so x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, negative 3 minus negative 2 over 5 fourths minus negative 3 fourths. So negative 3 plus 2, that's going to be negative 1. Or 5 fourths minus 3 fourths, that's going to be 2 fourths. Or that could be negative 1 over 1 half. Okay, And when we uh, divide by a fraction, we can instead multiply by the reciprocal. Be negative 1 times 2 over 1. And that'd be negative 2. My computer's going kind of crazy. Uh, but that's the last one. No, it's not. Let's do one more. Let's do a word problem. 42. Um, OK, so let's draw a picture. Right, This is from section 1.5, solving problems, problem solving strategies. Uh, so there's some um, Duquesne incline. I'm not sure how to say that. But uh, a cable car railway, it rises. Uh, 400 feet over a horizontal distance of 685 feet. So uh, apparently you start down here. 
on a train and go up a hill. So between the beginning and the end, you have gone up 400 feet. Okay. And you have gone horizontally 685 feet. So you've gained 400 feet at an elevation for 685 of, uh, of horizontal feet. Right. And so what is the slope of the incline? It's rise over run. It's gone up this much and over this much. So 400 over 685, which would simplify down to 80 over 137. Okay, and that is the last one. Thanks for watching.